Hi, everybody, and welcome to the continuation of page 22 in the workbook. And in this video, we're going to summarize some of the conceptual information about these two vector products that we defined, the dot product and the cross product. Um, you're going to find that some of these geometric interpretations we've already touched on in previous videos, but there will be a few, that we, few new ones that we add to it. Okay, and one note I want to make is I hope before you watch this video, you've watched the video that illustrates the right-hand rule, okay? Because it's going to be, I'm going to mention the right-hand rule in this video, and it might be difficult to picture, to picture in your head what I mean if you haven't already watched the video on the right-hand rule, okay? So that said, let's walk through this. Okay, the first theorem that we have here is called the geometric definition of the dot product. It's another way of thinking about what the dot product is telling us. Okay, and it gives us a formula for the dot product as follows. V dot W is the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of the angle theta between the two vectors. You might remember from the previous page that we noticed that there was a connection between the sine of the dot product and the angle that's between the vectors. That's kind of where this formula comes from, okay? That's, that's what it's getting at, okay? And so we'll, we'll do an example that kind of illustrates the use of this formula in a minute, okay? And then we come to the next theorem, which we'll call the geometric, def the geometric definition of the cross product, okay? So it's kind of a way of exploring or summarizing what geometrically a cross product is telling us. Okay, so we'll take two vectors v and w in three-dimensional space, and we can describe the cross product, v cross w, as having all of the three following properties. Okay, so first of all, first of those properties is that v cross w is always perpendicular to both v and w. Okay, we, we mentioned that in the, in the previous example that we did. Um, number two, the direction of v, v cross W will always be the direction determined by the right-hand rule, okay? And I'm going to talk through that, and again, I'm hoping that you've watched the video so that you can, so that you have a good picture in your mind of what that is. Okay, so let's illustrate the right-hand rule over here to the right. So we take two vectors V and W, and we want to figure out which direction does V cross W point in. We know it's going to be perpendicular to both V and W, but the question is, is it going to point up or down? Because there's actually two vectors um, or two directions we could go in that would be perpendicular to both V and W. So the idea of the right-hand rule is you take your right hand and you kind of put the bottom of your right hand along the first of the two vectors V, so imagine that you've got your right hand kind of along here, and you're going to do it so that, the, so that your fingers point in the direction of V. And then imagine curling your fingers in the direction of W in this way, and then asking yourself, where is my thumb pointing as I do all of that? You'll discover that your thumb is pointing straight up, okay? And so that's going to be the direction of V cross W. Okay, it's perpendicular to both V and W, and it's pointing up because that's the way that your thumb is pointing. Okay, and then um, what if we did it the other way around? Okay, and we wanted to talk about W cross V. Okay, so taking the cross product in the other order. Well, now what you would need to do is W is your first vector. So you want to align your right hand so that your fingers are, it's kind of aligned with W and your fingers are pointing in the direction of W. You want to be able to curl your fingers this way in the direction of V. And if you think about it, that's going to force you to take your right hand and to turn it upside down. Okay, otherwise you can't curl your fingers in the direction of V. And what that means, the fact that your hand is upside down, is that your thumb is going to be pointing down here this way. So W cross V actually points in the opposite direction. It points down because that's the way that your thumb is going. And that's another vector that's perpendicular to both V and W. Okay. All right, so that kind of an il illustration of point number two. Let's move on to point number three. This gives us some information about the length 
of v cross w, and it turns out that the length of the cross product vector has something to do with the area of a parallelogram. Okay, what do they mean by the parallelogram determined by v and w? Okay, well, it just means, imagine that you take a second copy of v and put it here, and a second copy of w and put it here, and the parallelogram is just this area in between. Okay, and what we're saying is that the area of that parallelogram, okay, that area that we shaded, happens to equal the length of the vector v cross w. So how long that cross product vector is is determined by how much area we've shaded there. Okay. And so let's wrap up this discussion then by just making a couple of notes on the dot and the cross product, okay? And these are facts that will be useful to remember. Okay, so the cross product of two vectors is a vector quantity. It's a vector. It's going to have i's, j's, and k's, but the dot product is a scalar. It just has a magnitude but no, no direction. Okay, that's the most important difference between these two products. Okay, and then we move on to point two. Okay, so to find a vector perpendicular to both v and w, we calculate v cross w. So remember, the cross product is about finding a vector that's perpendicular to two vectors at the same time. Okay, and then finally, number three, um, two vectors v and w are orthogonal to each other if and only if their dot product is zero. We talked about that on the previous page. Okay, so um, that's a quick way to test if two vectors that you have are perpendicular. Take their dot product, and if that dot product is zero, you know that the vectors are orthogonal to each other. Okay, and orthogonal is just another word for perpendicular.